Joining me now is one of the president's personal lawyers, Rudy Giuliani. Mr. Mayor, welcome to Fox News Sunday. <laughs> I understand you spoke with the president just a few hours ago. Is he too eager for this summit to happen? Well, sure he is, and I think he's positioned it brilliantly. Even 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 his uh, his opponents tell you that. I mean, he he uh, he, he wouldn't submit to that uh, ridiculous comment about a new meeting on the nuclear battlefield. He canceled it, and now we have Kim Jong Un. Uh, back where he was before, talking about wanting to do it, meeting with the leader of South Korea. So I don't want to uh, raise expectations, but I think the president's strategy has played out really brilliantly. And the most remarkable thing, he can do it with all these interruptions that I have to bring to him and Chase Sekulow from, you know, this, this totally uh, rigged investigation. Yeah, but did he express a level of optimism with you? And just back to my question, is he too eager to make this summit happen? Well, no. I mean, uh, somebody too eager to do it wouldn't, turn, wouldn't have turned it down, wouldn't have canceled it. I mean, he, this, uh, he's playing this like Ronald Reagan played uh, Reykjavik, and I think his achievement will be as great or greater uh, when, when it's all finished, but let's hope. Okay. And it might take six months. Reykjavik mm. didn't happen in a day. Uh, you're right about that, and there will be stops and starts along the way, and we should be certainly aware of all that. But you yeah. said the summit needs to be decided before the Mueller matter moves forward, so let's move to the Mueller matter now. Uh, this weekend, you said you would not go forward with Mueller until you understand what was happening with an informant with the Trump campaign. So, sir, what was this person doing with the campaign? Well, I mean, I, I don't know that yet. I haven't been told that. I mean, it, 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 it just further reiterates what I've come to conclude after two months of being in this, and the president obviously knew from, the, from very early on, which is this is uh, rigged. I mean, you've got 13 Democrats. You've got uh, a focus on uh, things that didn't happen, no Russia collusion, no obstruction, just defending yourself. And now we're, we're into the basis of it being illegitimate. Look at Professor Calabrese's article uh, just a few days ago about he's questioning whether there should even be an investigation because of the fact that they switched over from counterintelligence to a criminal and we don't I want to know did they get any evidence in that counterintelligence probe I think they didn't so um, you well, know that, when that you say you don't doubt. think they did uh, or they did not as you just referred to there uh, do you have that on good information because there were two classified briefings just on Thursday of this week and I'm told no documents were shown no one's talked about the briefing there was a short statement that was given by Adam Schiff and he read that off of a piece of paper so I, w what can you learn or, or perhaps now um, what do you know about this informant well, what I know is uh, just what I speculate, not anything that's been said to me. Uh, no one has shared it with me. I'm, I'm, I'm positive they shared it with the president, but uh, probably at this point, it's better that we don't know. Uh, we have to know, however, before we can recommend to the president whether to be interviewed. When you look at the backdrop of this rigged investigation, when you look at how they treated Manafort, how, how they sp spun off into Cohen, uh, how they are chasing things in, uh, in the Middle East, I mean, the reality is, uh, we're not going to sit him down if this is a trap for perjury. And until we're convinced of that, and if they don't show us these documents, well, we we just going to have to say no. Let me emphasize, he wants to explain that he did nothing wrong. It's us, the lawyers, who uh, have to convince him that this is a, a, a trap. So take us inside that meeting with the president then. What do you tell him? What does he ask you? Well, probably, what, what is that interchange? Well, like? First of all, my, my job has been to try and negotiate grounds for an interview. And uh, we've been doing it. I mean, we have a team now, not only with Jay, but with, uh, with uh, Jane Raskin and Marty Raskin. She's taken the, she's taken the load, really, of, of doing the negotiating with, uh, with the Mueller people. Uh, but the reality is that uh, we, we've all become convinced, even though we began with the hope that it could be done in good faith, that uh, there's too much here. Now, some of it is Mueller's fault, some isn't. The whole, whole thing with this uh, investigation uh, that was going on, which, which we consider spying, was uh, done before Mueller got involved. But it completely taints his investigation. Entirely, you believe? Yeah, I mean, what's the, you gotta ask, what's the basis of the investigation? That, and how about a leaked Comey report that turns out to come from a guy that, um, I think it's one of the biggest liars in the history of Washington. Well, let me get back to Comey in a moment. James Clapper said this about what you're referring to on this informant this week.
No, he, they were not. They were spying on a, a term I don't particularly like, but on what the Russians were doing, trying to understand were the Russians infiltrating, trying to gain access, trying to gain leverage and influence. Well, you, you call it a spy. They call it an informant. What's wrong with the government well, trying to figure? What, what's wrong with the government trying to figure out what Russia was up to? Nothing wrong with the government doing that. Everything wrong with the government spying on a candidate of the opposition party. That's a Watergate, a Spygate. I mean, uh, and without any warning to him. And now, to compound that, to make it into a criminal investigation, Bill. That's why this is a rigged investigation. That's why the president's been right from the beginning. Way back when the president said there was surveillance of his campaign. Turns out he was right. It was, it was human surveillance rather than technical surveillance, but surveillance nonetheless. All right, so you, your strategy became clear, back to James Comey. You're going to put the credibility of the president up against the credibility of James Comey. And almost every day this week, the president referred to Comey. He said this just on Wednesday. The FBI is a fantastic institution, but some of the people at the top were rotten apples. James Comey was one of them. I've done a great service for this country by getting rid of him, by firing him. So on that same, on that same day, James Comey tweeted this. He said, facts matter. The FBI's use of confidential human sources, the actual term, is tightly regulated and essential to protecting the country. Attacks on the FBI and, and lying about its work will do lasting damage to our country. How will Republicans explain this to their grandchildren? So you're putting James Comey on trial. And now listening to you talk today, you're also putting the government on trial based on that investigation saying it's not legitimate. I, I understand where you're coming from, Mr. Mayor, but how does this end? Well, first of all, it isn't the government. It's James Comey, Clapper, Brennan, the people who took this investigation and turned it on a candidate. Look, you can't say you're spying on the Russians if what you're trying to do is to show the Russians are colluding, whatever the hell that means, with, uh, with, with the Trump campaign. So the spying turned on the Trump campaign. When it did that, the president should have been briefed. If he wasn't, it'd be an outrage. And, and then, at that point, uh, the Trump campaign should have been briefed to be asked to cooperate, not treated like uh, criminals when there was no proof of any collusion. Now, we're a year and a half later, and there's no proof of collusion. So stop the investigation. Uh, stop if, spending if $20 million not, dollars more. If they do not do that, does the president have to fire someone? The president's not going to fire him because that would be playing into the hands of playing, you know, victim, Watergate. They're the Watergate. They're the people who have committed the crimes. What, the, what, the, what we have to do is go to court and, and seek uh, protection from the court if we have to do that. Our first thing is we sure as heck are not going to testify unless this is all straightened out. Unless we learn the basis of that Russian investigation, they're not going to tell us because the basis is going to turn out when it's spread to, to Trump to be unethical or illegal. They're going to have to tell us uh, what they have found so far on the basis of the investigation. Russian collusion. Here's what they found. Zero. Nada. Nothing. President, gee, maybe they should wake up and realize the president is innocent. That's why he wants to testify. And because of them, we don't want him to testify because they're not fair. They, they have rigged this investigation against him. Thirteen Democrats, angry as heck, and some of them there at Hillary Clinton's funeral. Uh, I mean, well, terrible. Well, we I are, mean, when, when she was supposed to have a victory party. We are a long way from an interview, aren't we? Well, maybe, maybe we're, we're not a long way from deciding we won't have one. And then they're going to have to go on what they have, and oh, everybody's going to find out they don't have anything. Mm. But earlier in the yeah, week, I mean, you, earlier in the week you said if the summit matter is decided, you, you could sit down in early July, and maybe part of uh, Mueller's report comes out in early September. Is that, is that timeline still viable? It is if we could get over what seem to be fairly mental problems that, that keep growing. Not, we don't create them, Bill. They, they, cre they created the problem of this, what do you want to call it, spygate investigation, improper investigation of, of a candidate. Um, why does everybody get all upset when they invade uh, the Democratic National Committee, Republicans do, and now they've invaded the Trump campaign, nobody's angry, yeah, well, and not, didn't warn them. Uh, if you sit for an interview, um, you could walk into a perjury trap. If you delay or if you say no, based on your description today, Democrats can use this against Republicans in the midterm. Are you essentially boxed in on that schedule? Well, uh, could, could be, but I don't think so. I mean, here, here, here's where we are. We have to be lawyers. The, the four of us, five of us, have to act like lawyers. 
and we have to give him the legal advice. He can make the political judgment. Look, I can put a different hat on and talk about that, too. His approval rating is the highest it's ever been. I believe the Democrats are, are, are going up a wrong alley here. Republicans did this to Clinton, and it backfired. The, the, the reality is the American people have come to the conclusion everybody else has. This investigation is rigged. It's unfair. And if they have to choose on, on impeachment or not, with a president who's going to be making peace with North Korea, God willing, and we should all be rooting for that, they're not probably, but we are. I don't see, I, this could really turn on them, and they're not going to have their impeachment Congress that they want. I have two more questions for you in the time I have left here. If you don't sit for an interview, yeah, you could face a subpoena. And I know you've said you'll challenge that subpoena all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, where you believe you will win because you believe you have the votes. Who is the fifth vote at the Supreme Court for you today? Well, I think on the constitutional issue, it's a close question. I think we win it, as does Ted Olson, who wrote an article about it in the Weekly Standard. I think it was last week. Uh, however, on the OLC question, namely, do they have the authority to do it? We can't lose. I think we get all votes because the, the, the Justice Department defines the authority of the independent counsel. He doesn't have his own authority. Justice Department says cannot issue criminal process to a sitting president. That's the law basically all over the world for a head of state. I can't see how we lose that, Bill. I mean, yeah. maybe in the Ninth Circuit. Well, I, I picked up one of the not comments. Not in, in a fair court. I, I picked up one of the comments from the weekend. You said he's more likely to sit with Chairman Kim than he is to sit with Bob Mueller. Uh, <laughs> j j listening to t you, you talk. I probably borrowed. I, you, you, you described probably him walking that into a Korean <laughs> perjury. I mean, just listening to you, I don't believe this interview will ever happen. Am I wrong, sir? No, if they can satisfy us, it, it could happen. He wants to do it. So far, since I've been in this, all I see are obstacles that they're putting in the way. Uh, starting with Cohen. I mean, what, what, what's that all about? And then, and then, and then going off on uh, some, something about, uh, about the Middle East, and, uh, which turned out to be a, a, a software that was turned down by the campaign. I mean, and now, the spy gate, wow, we got to get, and I don't think they're going to want to tell us about it because it's so damn embarrassing. Last and, question. And I want to emphasize yep. one more time. Yep. Not to the FBI, leadership at the time. Yeah, last question. Do you think you've given structure to his offense yes. since you came on board? Pardon me? Do you oh, have, yeah, I do. You have. I think I, I did. I think, I think I took over a good situation. I think Ty and, and, and John Dowd had really done a good job. They got out of the way all the disclosure of documents, and now we can sit in a position and say, you don't need them. Also a way to resist the, 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 the subpoena. And I think they had, uh, they had pretty much defined the fact that this, this interview had to, had to be on our terms, or well, we can't do it. So um, I think maybe I gave it more structure. I kind of have knowledge of him probably better than, than they do. I mean, he and I are very good friends for 30 years. Yeah, very interesting. And I worked very heavily on his campaign. So I know, I know this great desire he has to testify, but I also know this is an intelligent man who's got a lot of other things to do. And I can't stand it after this interview is over later today. I'll wait for him to call me. I can't interrupt what's going on with, I can't interrupt a briefing with Bolton and Pompeo and stuff. This is not important enough. Mayor Giuliani, thank you for your time. Thanks for spending part of your Thank Memorial you. Weekend with us. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Up next, two key senators react to the uncertainty over whether or not the Singapore summit will or will not happen.